So scouting sustainable tech um, innovations, um, it's not super easy to do because uh, just to give you a rough understanding, in India there are 40,000 startups, a lot of them work on innovation products. In Germany we have 8,000, worldwide there are 400 to 500,000. Um, how do you find the right innovators, like what are the projects you're working on? And you just mentioned when we talked beforehand that there's a new project um, you're working on and it's called uh, Tech Detector. So what is that about? Maybe um, you just start, Lawrence. Yeah, what is a tech detector? I think we need to go back to the questions that Christoph Bayer raised. And we have an, a practical case that was discussed early on where senior management meets the limitations of middle management. Basically, thinking of an idea and then how to actually implement it. Um, the way I see it is, Somebody like Mr. Bayer, who is sort of at the head of an organization, thinks about the, the question, what does technology mean for us? An organization that does capacity development in 130 countries, um, what does that mean for us in terms of what we do, but also how we operate? And the question is, do we do the right things? Do we know which technology is relevant for, and that is our core business, for sustainable development? Mm -hmm. And how do we know and how do we find out and what is the analytical tool to actually assess relevance for sustainability? Not an easy task, a relatively hard nut to crack as we know by now, but that is actually the idea. We were inspired by um, other radars. A lot of them exist. The first one that we discussed with Inza and, other, and, and Gitter and other colleagues was really the Gardner hype cycle. We liked hype cycle because a lot of head, hot air is, uh, mm -hmm. is often also in the technology debate, where basically Gartner, a private company, is assessing um, the maturity of a technology, the applicability, the social relevance. And we thought we need something like that for our work in terms of what are the contributions of technology in our country contexts, in the, in the way we, uh, we operate. So, as other, um, as tech, technology radar already existed, we came up with Tech Detector, and that is what it's supposed to do. And, and, and you um, are working at uh, Fraunhofer Gesellschaft, and it's Europe's largest application-oriented research organization. So you basically do research, but I um, understand, um, Antonino, that your job is also to not just talk about innovation, but also assess how this innovation can be applied in different countries. And we all learned that in Africa, there are different needs than uh, in the Philippines. It's hard to measure, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, just to give you a short introduction into the Fraunhofer. Fraunhofer is an unapplied research institution with 72 institutes in Germany, 14 around the world, 26,000 employees, and we are dealing with um, technology development for applications. So we are very close to industry. And uh, my job in a Fraunhofer, I'm a technology innovation manager, is to bridge the gap between markets, society, and technology. So what does a technology mean for the society, or in which kind of technology does the society need? So it's close up, closing up this loop. And we do, um, um, no, we have a lot of um, technologies being developed around in this world, and the speed of the develop technology development is increasing, also due to digitalization, and the question is, how can we find those? So sitting in front of the computer and going to Stanford ADU and the Fraunhofer ADU would be not an easy task. So what we did is we developed algorithms and we used um, smart data such as publications, patterns and so on to find new technologies fitting to a problem. I think we also had a lot of uh, touch points on the first talk we had, mm. finding um, uh, the right technology for the right need, and, and um, you, Mr. Bayer, also touched upon it, like talking to people, and again, GIZ has a very vast network um, in countries that a lot of startups or corporates don't have it, so you actually have people on the ground, you can talk to them, yeah. um, and I think that's one of the, the big benefits also for a tech radar to as assess and evaluate and also get the feedback from, from the people. So what kind of collaboration also locally um, you have in mind at the end, um, you know, with, with the information you will get? 
a number of things, I, I picked up a number of things already this morning that I found very relevant and I also found really provocative and, and, and great. I think one thing that we're good at, something that was mentioned earlier this morning, was make delivery your strategy. I think that is something we're good at. We make delivery our strategy. We are, we, because we largely decentralized, we have a lot of ideas, we have a lot of collaborations um, on the ground. But then, then again, how do we sort of re-concentrate this? redirect this, use these, this in a strategic way. And I think it's also something uh, Mr. Bayer is concerned about. Sort of how then we gather the, the news from, you know, meteorites like blockchain here and arti artificial intelligence there. Mm -hmm. What do we do with this? And then uh, Ruha this morning said, collaborate or die. <laughs> collaborate with whom? And how do we know which, um, which uh, corporations are really the right ones for us? Um, my experience with collaboration, in, particularly with the private sector, is that so far we have not been really very successful in that. We have a lot of formats. All of them are a little bit boring, are a little bit slow, are a little feel bureaucratic and unattractive. And, um, one of the things that we want to do is with this, with this whole exercise here, is also make a little bit of um, promotion for us as a partner for cooperation. And um, Christoph Bayer mentioned this already. We want to show that we are, we are uh, pr uh, present all over the world. We do interesting things, but we also know our limitations. And knowing our limitations, we invite this cooperation to you all with us because we know that sort of not only the technological side of it but also the, the inventive creative way of cooperating, collaborating is something we want to advance with us. So collaborating is, is, uh, is really key and uh, this is the, for me it's the starting signal, starting sign also to find better ways to for more interesting, fascinating, fun ways of cooperating, and I say this also in my new capacity as country director in Morocco, um, because I really have the idea that we want to do something like this also in a country context. And this is why this analytical um, sort of access to analyzing what um, technologies are relevant in a specific context, like for example Morocco, would also help us to pick up new initiatives that exist. In the, in the uh, all around Europe, uh, the um, Mediterranean, there's a, there are a lot of initiatives, job partnerships, and all of those. We need to pick up those initiatives and feed them with good, interesting, innovative ideas mm -hmm. of technology. Involve this also in those um, in those initiatives, and this is why this is another purpose for me to be really interested in, in this tech detector. Cool. Yeah, I also yeah. think, as so, you know, you are also the expert in yeah, like the, right. so, the, the the tech. Right. The, the aim of our collaboration, or the, the aim um, of Fraunhof is to strengthen its position in technology innovation management by opening up the, the dialogue with politics, which works well, with industry, which works good, and also with society, which could work better. Well, and now we have a partner present in 140 countries around the world, really down to earth, which could give us feedback in, for example, what is a racial bias in a technology development? Because I'm not sure that every Fraunhofer guy or lady is aware about this, this, these topics. So I feel this is a really good initiative uh, and a, a start of a, of a big collaboration. And I'm very honored, Lorenz and uh, Dr. Bayer, to be part of the founding team. Yeah, we also talked a little bit about collaboration as a key for innovation. Mm -hmm. um, but we all know that collaboration is not super easy. I know GIZ has done collaboration on many different levels for a while in different countries. But again, it's not easy. And also Fraunhofer um, has done it. What are the, the, the key learnings from that kind of collaboration so far? Uh, what do you think are the, the key success factors for bringing these kind of partners together? Because it's a pair that is quite unusual, a research organization also focusing on bringing technology to new business models, and um, um, but so far not focusing on sustainability and emerging markets, and then GIZ bringing in uh, a totally different vibe. Um, mm -hmm. Like, 
what are the, 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 the learnings so far or what are the feelings so far? Okay, so we have implemented such tech detectors, we call them trend arena, within Fraunhofer for an automotive cluster and outside also, for example, for a fintech uh, industrial cluster where we mapped the technology fields and the technologies according to the relevance of those uh, uh, companies. And the common learning was that uh, um, bringing those people all together on a table and let them speak about future uh, starts to get them sensitized about, oh, there is maybe also other way on how we could solve our problems. There are other technologies. And you can start to see them discussing, discussing about the future and looking about on the trends and seeing what kind of impact does this trend have for my business, for, for my country where I am, and even for my own life. So that's, that's one of the key uh, points. And having a platform where you can go back and forth and where you can see also the developments after the developments could give you also an, a feedback on, for example, oh, this technology starts to get much more interesting because of something happened. I felt that a number of presentations this morning resonated really um, with my impression of what sometimes are the shortcomings of our way of working. Um, Ruha had, an, had, I think, nine rules of how to co cooperate, collaborate effectively, and I think all of them, uh, we as GIZ, should take to heart. I think a number of them are very, <laughs> they, they hurt even, but um, I think they're important. One thing that I realized as GIZ, in cooperation with uh, research organizations, we have a different rhythm. Mm -hmm. It's... Um, we need products faster, we need results faster, we cannot wait until a final report. Actually, the final report is not even relevant for us. Mm -hmm. It's more, how can we put things into practice? How can we, can we try them out? Mm -hmm. And for me, um, one learning thing within this community is also, I take away that this community is often, in my impression, much better in really trying to do, be faster, uh, creating more prototypes, um, working more um, into, on the one hand, making delivery the strategy, but also going faster into actually trying out things. And, um, yeah, overcoming middle management, like me, as an <laughs> obstacle is obviously another one, but um, I think it's, it's really, we have to be, um, we have to take more risk as well, which is something that is um, at the same time I'm really aware in my new role that uh, the limitations are also very, they're very much there as sort of a, a government-owned company that there are strong, sometimes um, a feeling that we are in a straitjacket, but I think we should really um, try out to take more risks, be more flexible, use the space that we have, and really speed is uh, of the essence, I think. It's very interesting because um, I'm, I'm from Berlin and every 20 hours a startup is born and everybody's like, yeah, super cool or I work with Israeli startups and um, they come and tell me, oh, I have 20 different business ideas. If the one idea I'm working on is not working out, um, I do a second one and a third one and the fifth one and the sixth one and, and then you are like suddenly on the 20s idea and I also wonder how is it working? I mean, even in my head to separate all these ideas um, when they tell me about it, it's super hard. Um, and you mentioned like German angst and, and, and the way we work. Uh, but we have a lot of great people here um, also on stage that are like, just do it, just, just pick it on. And, and I also get the impression that um, the tech detector is also something that will definitely give more transparency, which of course is important. Mm -hmm. But then important is also what comes next. So how are the learnings? I mean, we have two eager people here on stage that are super keen on sharing that knowledge and also share it within the GIZ community to actually make something out of it. Um, but there also is always the risk um, that you know people mistreat um, innovation and it's very important to have that, that kind of um, transparency. Do you have any vision what you would love to do with that, that um, kind of uh, uh, information you have at the end? Yeah. You know, what I would love to do, if we do trend arenas, uh, we describe the technology as very uh, key performance indicator driven. The um, energy sub consumption is three watts, the um, uh, Wirkungsgrad is 50% and so on. And, and that, these are numbers which are interesting for an engineer, 
but not for someone who's, uh, let's say, on the ground and wants to make projects. So my vision would be to have a platform with technologies where the technologies are uh, described needs-driven. Which need do they address? Which benefit do they provide to which stake, uh, stakeholder? To the guy on the field, to the government, to the industry, and so on. This would be my, my vision of this platform. For me, it, the, the purpose of the Tech Detector is really to um, have an interesting enough um, analysis to attract interest from people to discuss with us whether these results make sense and what they mean as, um, as a basis for designing programs, for um, having a dialogue with our partners, for having a dialogue with the people that commission us, that uh, give us the money to actually implement projects. And that would be actually my, I would be really happy if we use this um, sort of overall, how good are we in terms of the sustainability, how relevant are technologies, but also how do we do this to better design programs in country contexts, and how can we have a more effective dialogue, hopefully attracting uh, interesting cooperation partners, because I do believe collaborate or die. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. Um, I do projects in India and the Philippines and Indonesia, and then European companies, startups with interesting technologies come to me and say, I want to access that market, and they have no idea if that innovation, the technology is actually working there. And then there's, of course, the human factor. So having a great technology doesn't mean that you have a great no. product. And you actually have a very good team that understands the cultural aspect of a new market. And I think this is something that I'm very much looking forward to having mm. ground information, but then also taking the information to the next level. And I think this is something that GIZ, the human factor is something that mm. GIZ can also bring in. I hope yeah. so. Yeah, me too. So we are the methodological experts. GIZ is the domain expert. And I think this is a good kind of marriage. <laughs> Marrying is always Marriage good. Made in heaven. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's super funny because I'm not sure if you have seen it. There's a talk coming up or a workshop from Impact Hub. And they say at Impact Hub, it's where ideas have sex. Um, because, you know, coming together also means, you know, strong collaboration. Um, um, who would you like to marry? Far, who, look, <laughs> who would you like to marry to? Yeah. Like, you know, are there any other collaboration partners you're looking um, out to? Because again, there are a lot of interesting people here in the audience that might be interested in also joining uh, the project. Anybody yeah. that th that you think, oh, I really would love that would my my, my dream partner like number three yeah. or four. Like, I'm not into multi marriage, but yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, it would be nice to have um, contact with the technology developer which would love to have their technology into the radar system. This could be some interesting... I, I'm really counting on an interest to really f uh, um, further this idea and refine it further by discussing it. Um, for me, it's not important to have a perfect product, but to have something that's worth discussing and that is interesting and hopefully also controversial enough to attract attention and then to take this as a basis for interesting ideas for cooperation. Um, any technology, because we are you know, looking for tech innovation, any product, any technology that really rocks your world? If you have to pick, like, is it 3D printing, AI, or what do you think, like, oh, I'm super for, excited about? For me, uh, artificial intelligence is a very okay. interesting topic because I'm also in, inside yeah. the topic, and I feel that the artificial intelligence is, will disrupt partly everything, which is at least in the business context. We also have a few topics that touch on that. Mm, uh, yeah. What about you, Lorenz? I found this morning a very interesting presentation about um, living buildings. Oh. Um, that is something that I hadn't thought about and um, potentially big, big impact as well. But um, I find it most, most fascinating really to think about what technologies are most relevant in what context and what can we contribute together with others. You know, that's the reason why I'm so curious because you never know what comes up tomorrow. Yeah. There are so many technologies yeah. out there and also listen to people mm. that present their products now. Um, some of the products I haven't heard about, and they mm. are on stage, and they do amazing stuff. So they have to be part of the radar for sure. They should, yeah. So make a list yeah. um, and write everything okay. down. Yeah.